In the fall of 1952, I was a student at LSU, changing my major from music to fine arts. On registration day, I walked over to the art department and met Peter Kahn, a new design instructor from New York. Peter turned out to be a great teacher. Sometimes I was invited to his house on Sundays for lunch. His wife Ruth and the first of their seven children were there. And for a while, Wolf Kahn, Peter's younger brother, a painter from New York. Wolf and Peter had both studied painting with Hans Hoffman in New York. Hoffman had a summer school in Provincetown, Massachusetts, and Wolf said he could get me and my roommate Betty King an inexpensive place to stay there. Betty told him we were going to Mexico next summer, but maybe we would go to Provincetown for the first half of the summer. Wolf just laughed and said, no one leaves Provincetown in the middle of the season. You'll stay the whole summer. Betty and I arrived in Provincetown in the late spring of 1953. It seemed like a magic place. It was a working seaport with fishing boats and clear, bright sunlight. The people we met were friendly and larger than life. Commercial Street, the front street which ran along the harbor beaches, was the main shopping area with unique craft shops, restaurants, and inns with hand-carved signs. Some of these shops were themselves works of art. One of our favorites was the Paula Boutique, run by Jack and Ellen E. Larned, artists who sold their crafts in the front of the shop and made them in the back. This is Bradford Street, which runs parallel to Commercial Street. Like many of the young artists in town in the 50s, Betty and I had very little money. The town people rented out their spare rooms and came up with creative ways to house us. Wolf got us a place at Sonny Tasha's house on Howland Street. Our friend Oscar Snow is standing in the front yard. The backyard was a woodsy area with little studios surrounding a vegetable garden that we weeded so we could eat the vegetables. Betty and I stayed in this basement apartment. Two years later, it was occupied by Taro and Gwen Yamamoto. Other painters staying at Sonny's that summer were John Grillo, Al Deloro, and Alan Capro. But Wolf Kahn spent the summer in a shack on the dunes. It was a custom in the 50s that hungry artists went down to the wharf in the mornings when the fishing boats came in to unload their fresh fish. These men would throw us a fish, which we took home for breakfast. Betty and I lived on those fish for a few weeks until we were able to get jobs. In those days, many of us painted in the daytime and worked in the town restaurants at night. The official opening of the season was the day of the blessing of the fleet. The bishop came from Boston and prayed for good fishing while the decorated Provincetown fishing boats paraded before him in the harbor. There were parties all over town and the Provincetown band marched in the streets. Here comes the Boston Bell with a daily load of tourists from Boston. Many of these tourists would pile into the Lobster Pot restaurant, which was right next to the wharf. Betty was the hostess, I was a waitress, and Dominic Falcone was a busboy. Dominic, or Val as we called him, was a former acting student, a jazz lover, and a beginning writer who had discovered the works of Ernest Hemingway and Sherwood Anderson when he was a signal man in the Navy. Val and I were both interested in films. That summer a program called Focus on Films of 16 millimeter experimental films was held in a former church in the center of town. All kinds of ideas were tested out in Provincetown. 
Jimmy Simpson opened up a breakfast restaurant called the House of Arts. You cooked your own food, cleaned up, and left whatever money you could afford in a basket hanging from the ceiling. You could hang your artwork on the walls. In this tiny little town, it seemed that anything was possible, and you wished it could last forever.